Bismillah, alhamdulillah, wa salatu wa salam ala rasulillah, wa ala alihi wa sahbihi ajma'in amma ba'd. The 28th juz, or para, of the Qur'an begins with Surah Al-Mujadilah. And this surah basically has certain uh, rulings pertaining to uh, family law as well as uh, certain issues related to the society in general and certain adab that we're supposed to have. And so uh, among the rulings uh, that are mentioned here are the rulings related to al-dhihar. Al-dhihar uh, is basically when a person compares his wife to his mother. Uh, and so, uh, you know, uh, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mentions uh, the penalty for um, for uh, making such a comparison. Uh, and one of the things that this shows us, one of the things that this shows us, is that Islam uh, has come to defend the rights of women, uh, unlike what they want us to believe nowadays. And so Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala revealed verses protecting the rights of women from the abuse of their husbands. Uh, also, we have here uh, in this surah this discussion regarding uh, a najwa. A najwa is to privately converse with someone in the presence of other people, in the presence of a third person or more than that. And so Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mentions the adab of how we should uh, have our gatherings and uh, we should not uh, secretly uh, speak with one another uh, in the presence of others. Uh, also, we have towards the end of this surah, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mentioned something very important, and that is the danger, the danger of having allegiance for the enemies of Islam, for the kuffar and the enemies of Islam. And so Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has forbidden us from taking uh, the kuffar and the, the, the enemies of Islam as our allies, even if they are our brothers and our fathers and our close of kin. After that, we have Surah Al-Hashr. Surah Al-Hashr is also referred to as Surah Bani Al-Nadhir. Bani Al-Nadhir were basically uh, one of the three uh, tribes of the Jews who used to live in Medina and so uh, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mentioned in this surah what happened with uh, one of these tribes Bani al nadir and how basically uh, they uh, you know uh, betrayed their um, their covenant that they had with the Muslims and so uh, you know the Prophet was, was permitted to uh, fight them and expel them and so we have here in the surah mention of how the hypocrites uh, the hypocrites they ally themselves with the with the enemies of Islam uh, but in reality even uh, even then they don't support the enemies of Islam when they fight against the Muslims and so the the hypocrites the munafiqun they ran away and did not support uh, the Jews after promising them that if you are attacked, we will be with you and we will support you. And so Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala exposed the munafiqun and uh, showed their true colors. Uh, also we have, you know, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mentioning in the surah, the virtue of the, 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 the muhajirun and the ansar. Uh, also we have here, uh, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mentions uh, the greatness of the Qur'an and uh, how if it was revealed uh, upon a mountain how that, that mountain would shake uh, due to the fear of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and then the very end of this surah the end of surah al-hashr uh, basically ends off with uh, several names of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala Almost 15 names or attributes of Allah are mentioned in this one uh, one place in the Quran. Uh, and so, you know, this surah is very well known for that reason. After that, we have Surah Al Mumtahina. Surah Al Mumtahina basically mentions several rulings pertaining to Al Wala' Al Bara. 
uh, loyalty for the believers and disloyalty uh, and disassociation from the kuffar and the mushrikun and their enemies of Islam. Also, we have uh, Allah mentioning the difference between how we deal with the kuffar in terms of those who are hostile to the Muslims, they are enemies of Islam and they fight against the Muslims, how we deal with them, and on the other hand, how we deal with those kuffar who are not fighting us. And so Allah mentions that there's a difference in terms of how we are supposed to uh, deal with both of these groups of the kuffar. Then after that, we have mention of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mentioning uh, the hijrah of uh, the, the, the believing women uh, when they made hijrah from Mecca to Medina and how uh, you know uh, they came and gave pledge of allegiance to the Prophet ﷺ and other rulings pertaining to that. Then we have Surah Al-Saf. Surah Al-Saf uh, starts off by mentioning uh, the danger, the danger of uh, saying uh, and preaching what we do not practice ourselves. And then we have mention of the da'wah of Musa alayhi salam as well as Isa alayhi salam uh, basically uh, to teach us a lesson and that is that these two prophets, their people, their followers betrayed them. And so we should not be like them. We should not betray our messenger Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Rather we should support him especially when uh, the time for jihad comes. We have to be with him and not betray him. Then we have uh, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mentioning the virtue of jihad and how uh, the true uh, business deal that is profitable is the one that you make with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. The deal that you make with Allah. And that is basically to believe in Allah and his messenger and to fight in the cause of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Then we have after that uh, Surah Al-Jumu'ah. Surah Al-Jumu'ah uh, basically uh, starts off by mentioning the greatness of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, venerating Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, and then moving on to uh, basically dispraising the Jews uh, for the fact that they did not uh, act by the knowledge that Allah had given them. Uh, and Allah gives us a parable of how they are like the donkey who carries a load uh, a load of books uh, but he does not benefit from that the donkey doesn't benefit from that uh, and so Allah mentions this to basically indicate to us believers that we should not be like that but rather we should uh, practice and implement what we know and what we have knowledge of our deen after that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mentions uh, the um, importance of Salat al Jumu'ah and how uh, you know our um, uh, our our uh, working for the dunya should not be a reason for uh, not performing Salat al Jumu'ah, but rather when the adhan for Salat al Jumu'ah is called, we should leave our business, our trade and go to the remembrance of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. After that we have Surah Al-Munafiqoon. Surah Al-Munafiqoon basically mentions uh, several traits and characteristics of the hypocrites, the Munafiqoon, uh, so that we believers uh, should be aware of these Munafiqoon and also so that we don't uh, be like them. After that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mentions uh, the true loss the true loss, and that is uh, an individual who is basically, uh, he becomes busy in the dunya. He becomes busy with his wealth and his children, uh, forgetting about the remembrance of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. After that we have Surat At-Taghabun. Surat At-Taghabun basically mentions uh, about Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, his attributes, his uh, power uh, and his knowledge, as well as uh, warning us of the Day of Judgment. Uh, and so, At-Taghabun uh, uh, is basically Yawm uh, Al-Qiyamah. It's one of the names of Yawm Al-Qiyamah. And uh, the meaning of At-Taghabun is uh, that people will lose. There will be people who will lose on that day. 
uh, and that is the day in which people will lose, so we should beware of not being among those who will lose on that day. Uh, later on in this surah, we have Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mentions that we should beware of the fitna, of the fitna of our wives and our children. Uh, also, there is mention of uh, uh, giving in charity uh, and, uh, you know, remembering the taqwa of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. After that, we have Surah Al-Talaq. Surah Al-Talaq, basically, uh, which means divorce, uh, it is uh, basically, it, it mentions the remaining rulings pertaining to divorce that were not mentioned in Surah Al-Baqarah. And so, previously we mentioned that uh, in Surah Al-Baqarah we have several rulings pertaining to Al-Talaq or uh, divorce. Uh, the remaining of these rulings are mentioned here in Surah Al-Talaq. One of the uh, uh, important points uh, that we can notice here in this surah is that Allah uh, basically connects Al-Talaq with At-Taqwa. And that's because many times uh, you know, people resort to At-Talaq because of a lack of Taqwa. Uh, and so Allah reminds us constantly in this surah of having the Taqwa of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Uh, after that, we have um, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala basically uh, mentions uh, towards the end of the surah uh, what happened to the previous nations uh, and how um, uh, you know, those nations who disobeyed the, the command of Allah and His Messenger, how they were destroyed. Uh, finally, we have the last surah in this juz, Surah Al-Tahreem. Uh, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in this surah basically opens the surah, uh, starts the surah by mentioning the danger of uh, uh, trying to make something haram that Allah has made halal for the purpose of pleasing others. Uh, also, we have uh, in this surah uh, the command, the command to uh, protect ourselves and our families from the hellfire. قُوْ أَنفُسَكُمْ وَأَهْلِيكُمْ نَارًا Protect yourselves and your families from uh, the fire which is uh, of... Uh, w w the fuel of this fire is men and stones. Also we have Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala uh, towards the end of the surah giving us two parables. Uh, the parable of uh, the believing woman. Allah gives us two examples of that. And the parable of the disbelieving woman, Allah gives us two parables of that as well. And with that we come to the end of this juz. Until the next session, subhanakallahumma wa bihamdik. Ashhadu an la ilaha illa ant astaghfiruka wa atubu ilayk.